Good morning and welcome. Patriot Radio News Hour. Joe and Jason wrapping up the week on this Friday. I know that uh, the snow was falling on the front range. I hope, uh, you know what, hey, it wasn't too bad, so that that's good news. And it, we can all use the water when the snow melts, right? So, so think about it positively here in the Valley of the Sun. Uh, it was only, it wasn't that hot yesterday. It was like only in the, in the 70s. I, you know, I don't want to brag about it, but let's just face it. Uh, it's really nice here right now as uh, March is halfway over. By the way, uh, our medals program, we don't really talk a lot about uh, our medals program, but we probably should. Uh, we have hundreds of people in it. it it's such a unique program. Uh, you can do as little as a hundred dollars a month. There is no maximum. We've got several people now doing five thousand dollars a month and everything in between. You pick the amount. You pick the day of the month. You leave a card on file with us. The day of the month that we're going to hit your card, and you get four physical deliveries a year. When when our plan first started, we'd wait till the end of the month and uh, ship everybody uh, at the end of the month. Well, it's so big that that's no longer effective. It's just uh, too too many people in it. So uh, we ship every day for the month of March. So every three months, uh, we're out there shipping medals to people. You know, it, it was really set up initially for the lower-end people. Uh, when we first started the program, it was only $50. But, uh, you know... Hey, you can't buy a whole lot now for for three hundred bucks anymore. But uh, the minimum is now a hundred dollars a month. So you figure, hey, every month uh, that's three hundred dollars at the end of the quarter, or whatever amount you want to pick, and then you get four physical deliveries a year. Uh, and I just want to remind you, keep your eyes out. I know the girls send you your tracking and all that stuff. If you're a pickup person, we'll call you at the end of the month. So if you pick up in Arizona, you pick up in Colorado, uh, we'll give you a call at the end of the month to come and get your stuff. But uh, if, if you want to know more about it, go out to allamericangold.com. And along the top, we, we've got our medals icon, the medals button. Just click on it. You can read all about it. About it. Uh, it it's a great program and like we always do there's no fees uh, we, we you can start it stop it change the amounts there's no setup fees or a cancel at any time we understand uh, it's a really neat program and let's not forget for a lot of people out there they're like well gosh you know day to day but the month Right, I I don't have a lot of extra money, but but I've got I've got my money in, in an IRA. Uh, you can always do a precious metals IRA. Matter of fact, uh, and it seems to happen as, as more more people get nervous about what's happening in, in the world, what's happening in in the economy, what's happening with with the debt and bubbles and all this other stuff. Uh, they look to diversify. You can absolutely do precious metals IRAs with us. Uh, they get stored. You get to pick the location. There's two locations, uh, Delaware and Texas, in either one of those depositories. Here's the great thing about that plan. When we talk about a precious metals IRA, at any point, you can take delivery of the material that's in your IRA. So if you put 10th ounce American Gold Eagles in your IRA, if you put Silver Eagles in your IRA and you decide, you know what, I want I, I want to take possession of it, just like you were selling, but you can take uh, physical possession of it. So if you want you want to inquire about either of those two things, you can uh, go to the website. We've got an IRA button out there. We, we've got the metals button. Or just call us at 800-951-0592. And, and Jason, it's been quite a week this week. The inflation numbers coming in. Just kind of like we told people, hey, there's this... This notion that inflation was going to go away really wasn't uh, what was going to happen here. And, and now all of a sudden, a lot of people are saying, are we going to be stuck with three, 
4% inflation per year. Janet Yellen yesterday trying to convince everybody it's not stagflation, but yes, it may take longer to get inflation under control. I don't hear you. But I'll, I don't hear myself yeah. either. No, no, there you go. You're good. You're good. You're uh, good. There we go. Okay. Now, Jenny Yellen, remember she's saying that uh, inflation might calm down because the rents are going to go down, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I don't know, Joe. We'll, we'll, we'll see, right? We'll, we'll see. I just, uh, you know, I, uh, I did want to add one thing to the metals program. You know, we're, at, we're coming to the end of a quarter. So signing up today, signing up this week, is, 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 even next week, it's great. You'll, you'll be starting the quarter fresh in April. So I just – just uh, the, the metals programs, people. There's, there's a little bit. It's not for everybody, but it, there's a, there's some wisdom in it. Uh, the whole pay yourself first. It just comes out monthly. is is, is, a, is a great way to, to buy into metals, not to think about it. So, but yeah, Jenny Ellen is. Uh, you, you haven't called her the lunch lady much lately, but that's uh, she still uh, looks like the lunch lady, doesn't she? She still. Listen, I dubbed her the lunch lady back when she was uh, second in command at the Fed and. Uh, very dangerous. I think Janet Yellen uh, will will be one of the people in history that will look very unfavorably towards uh, very reckless policy. She's a big spender. Uh, she she loves debt. She she thinks you know. Remember uh, when when interest rates were zero, she was begging, begging. Uh, the government. Hey, just keep going into debt. It's not going to cost us very much. Now, now look at it. February, right? We went $300 billion in debt in the month of February. But guess what? The interest rate isn't zero anymore, is it? Yeah. Thanks a lot, lunch lady. By the way, what does it cost for, for lunch anyways anymore? Yeah, that got a lot more expensive too. Thanks again, Janet. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Joe and Jason Picharito News Hour on this Friday. Uh, the Dow is down again today, uh, down eighty five right now. Uh, yesterday kind of closed towards the bottom there. The S and P's down twenty three. The Nasdaq uh, down a hundred and fifteen. Uh, the ten year note four three one and uh, probably needs to go even higher than that. It's going to be interesting. As these auctions continue to grow in size, the reverse repo kind of running out of money, our rates kind of going to go up, not because the Fed says they're raising rates or anything like that, just because, hey, there's an overwhelming amount of debt and just less money uh, out there to buy the debt. That, that could be a possibility as well. We'll have to watch it. Crude oil is flat right now. 81.25 uh, on crude oil, crude oil. Unfortunately, gasoline higher again today. Uh, the gold market, gold is flat right now. 21.67. Silver, I warned you yesterday. I had a feeling that, that silver was looking poised for a breakout. Uh, up 50 cents, 25 40, so squarely above that $25 level. Uh, na- now we're looking, uh, if it can break 26, it'll set a high in, in silver going back uh, a couple of times during that COVID uh, era last year at the end of, of 2022 and into 2023. <clears throat> Kind of the, was that that high water mark for silver, uh, so we're we're definitely on a breakout to the upside in, in that category. Copper running as well, right with it uh, for eleven uh, on copper, and and again this inflation stuff just looks like it's building right back up again. The need to be diversified in the year of chaos. We, we talk about it all the time. I highly recommend you, you check out our friends at Y Refi up to 10.25% fixed rates of return. You can compound your money daily. You can take it as income. You can turn it on. You can turn it off. There's no fees. They don't attack principal. It's not correlated to Wall Street. I think that's the biggest part. It's not correlated to Wall Street. 
Check them out. Invest. Y refi.com. That's the word invest, the letter Y R E F Y.com. Or just make it easy. Just call them. 888 Y refi 24. And if you want more, listen, listen to the idiotic stuff that's happening up in Washington, D.C. Uh, House Speaker Johnson apparently uh, is having a little change of heart, Jason, when it comes to funding Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan, uh, no longer saying that it needs to be tied to the border. Uh, They may be putting something forward. There's two options. This is the nonsense. Option one, to fund Ukraine and others is what they're calling a a kind of like we're going to loan you the money. Yeah, we'll we'll just we'll call it a loan. Right? <laughs> Ukraine will never ever have a chance to pay it back, but you know what? We can call it a loan, right? That that's that's option number 1. We we'll just start calling this stuff loans. Option number 2, and this is the one that has me really concerned because this will be the dumbest thing that they have maybe ever done because already people want the alternative to the dollar look at gold look at how many of you uh listen to this show you guys know right hey i need a hedge against the dollar all these countries know it Right now, now you have China just canceling hundreds of millions of dollars worth of agriculture products and ordering them uh, from Brazil or other countries where they don't have to use dollars. Right now, the United States and its allies, really it's the United States, is holding almost $300 billion dollars of Russian assets, okay, and they're, you know, because they're mad, right, because, well, you invaded Ukraine, and, you know, we we wanted Ukraine to be NATO and all this other nonsense. There's more and more talk, Jason, that they want to confiscate these assets from Russia and sell them as a way to pay for Ukraine. Now that sounds really good on TV, doesn't it? Bad yet, yeah, yeah. Let's just do that. What do you think all the other countries in the world will think about that? Well, gosh, any time the United States pokes its nose in our business, because that's what we did in Ukraine. Let's not lie about it. That they can go ahead and not just, it's already bad enough, Jason, that they seized the asset. That's part of the problem of why the rest of the world wants to turn away from the dollar. Could you imagine if they decided to liquidate these assets and essentially steal it from Russia and give it to somebody else? What the rest of the world is going to think? It's just only an idiot would think that's a good idea. That's why Janet Yellen loves it. I get the feeling there's more to it than just that, too. I get the feeling this is just uh, the fluff that we get to hear about. I'm, I'm sure it's much more either complex, you know, I'm sure there's more moving parts to this, or it's, it's there's something that's completely just not being told to us. I just, uh, you know, because you know, you're right, Joe, there is some common sense to, to what you're saying uh, on its face, what, what's being said that's going to happen. But, uh, you know, why isn't Russia just going crazy and then and, and getting you know, why isn't vladimir putin releasing statements about you know what what he's going to do back what his retaliation is going to be you know it's there's there's not a lot of, uh, you've been mentioning this for a while about these these assets that are have been seized and might be sold and it just doesn't seem like anybody's really reacting very strongly to it it's like you know it's 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 it's, it's very interesting so it makes me wonder what what play russia has or is this more of a uh, well, Russia is sort of giving us these assets, or, we're, or, or you know, there's there some other trade or sale. You know, it, it doesn't seem real, does it, Joe? Because there's no reaction to it. Well, you see, there's no reaction that you get to hear, that we get to right. hear, right? That doesn't mean there's no reaction, right? I'm sure there's been plenty of reaction from Russia and China, and 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 again, 
it'll be interesting to see, but this is one of those things where uh, a lot of people, you know, go, oh, well, gosh, that sounds, you know, yeah, we don't have to pay for it. No, this, it'll, that will actually make things worse. So I, I hope they don't do it. Um, uh, and But then again, you know, with the amount of crushing debt we're under, a lot of people are thinking that may be uh, a really good idea, but not to be outdone. An even better idea. Old Bernie Sanders, remember him? He's back. He's introducing a bill, and this is just insanity, that would standardize the work week to 32 hours. But he's not done. But you get paid the same amount as you did for working 40 hours. So just just another... Just another uh, another uh, scheme that's just a uh, minimum wage rate hike. <laughs> that's what, I mean, that's what that is. It's just another minimum wage rate hike. You just you're just adding uh, eight hours onto the onto every worker's uh, salary. But here's the other thing: there's so many part-time workers. How's that going to work? You know, is he, what, what about the guy that's working 15 hours? Is, is, is it in there? I mean, I'm guessing there's probably something in there for that. I guess maybe it's a it's a 25 percent hourly uh, addition. If, if it's for part-time workers too, that would be significant. But that's just, uh, you know, that's, that's just is what causes more inflation. He's, uh, he would be a very inflationary guy, too, if he was president. He would, he'd be very much Biden-like. Yeah, th- this is just, and I, I only bring it up because this is what we're dealing with up there. Think about, like, Joe Biden, you know, he, he, Kamala Harris, right? Guys like, like Johnson and, and Bernie Sanders uh, that, that just simply, hey, anything... To, to control us and, and uh, waste our time. Here we here we we don't even have budgets passed. We've got continuing resolutions, and these guys are wasting time on absolute nonsense, Jason. It really just is another example of why. And think about this, right? Think about if you're out there, you're in Japan and you're in China, you're anybody else with treasuries, and you're seeing nonsense like this from Bernie Sanders, and you're like, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think America is maybe the greatest place to be investing right now. It, it just, it, it's just such a glaring example of what's wrong with having government this big. Yeah, uh, the federal government especially. Yeah, we, we don't need we don't need somebody in some faraway place telling us what to do. But there, there it is, Joe, and it's it's uh, it's a sad fact of life. Uh, it's federal government that, that uh, lost our ability to, to spend gold and silver as actual money. You know, it's their fault that we're that we're here selling gold and silver on the air. You know, we're we're adapting to the situation that was put, placed in front of us. And uh, yeah, they, they they don't really understand monetary uh, sanity when it comes to the average guy. They just need they just need to take care of the guys that got them elected. That's all. Yeah, it's a I don't know, just a big waste of time. It's so frustrating. Uh, to see they just don't even uh, understand, you know, right, right already the rot uh, that is all the, the being weighted down with all of this debt. And, and remember, go back to the 90s because this was really the pivotal point between the banking regime being able to, to really justify itself as, hey, you know what, okay, I guess maybe you guys were right, right? Think about Alan Greenspan. Remember we had those budget surpluses. I want to say it was two years in Clinton. Of course, it really wasn't because Social Security, we were overpaying at the time. But, okay, on paper, they had a, a budget surplus, and Alan Greenspan was telling the world the deficit would be paid off. By 2010, Jason's probably right. If Alan Greenspan had been right, and the United States, for the first time since Andrew Jackson, had the deficit paid off, we probably we, we probably wouldn't be on the air, right? We sell in gold, right? Gold would probably be I don't know a hundred dollars, maybe I don't know something something like that. I mean, think about uh, Great Britain; they sold all their gold. At like 250 bucks. Yeah, you think they don't want it back now? Uh, but, but Jason, this is what has happened 
because it's been spend, 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 debt, 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 and now uh, the they've got Congress addicted to it, they're addicted to it, the economy's addicted to it, and now this is this is the repercussions where you can't get inflation under control, but yet you can't, you know, they don't have the, the will to raise rates. Could you imagine? Because right now they should be raising rates. They should be raising rates, but they're not. Matter of fact, they're talking about cutting rates. Why? Because they don't want the Dow to be 20,000, right? They don't want uh, banks. They don't want 1,000 banks to go under. But, Jason, it'll happen either way. C- correct. And, and if you do pay off the debt, we're a debt money system. This, this thing was changed. And one, once the Fed traded out their Federal Reserve notes for all United States notes, and then they got rid of all the gold in 1933. It was all debt. That's why they pushed so much of it. That's why there was a mini crash in the markets, a, a, a mini depression, recession in 1920 that people don't talk about too much. Then by 1929, the whole thing crashed by design, and gold was was confiscated, and uh, you know we bankrupted this nation. Is because the bankrupt nation was now an indebted nation. We're so 34 whatever trillion dollars of debt, Joe. If we paid it off. There'd be no money. There'd be no markets. There'd be such a crash because that's the system we're in. There'd just be, you know, would be left. There'd just be coins. The only thing that the U.S. mint still mints, and then there would there would be no America. So you have to get back to the way money used to be, which that's not happening soon, is it, Joe? Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two, and I uh, got two really good items today. I've got. 75 Mint State 61 $20 Liberties for less than a circulated $20 Liberty. Right now, uh, $20 Liberties, $2,375. You can get these graded coins. So, so you know, when uh, these coins didn't get put into circulation, uh, they get graded by NGC or PCGS, and uh, you know sixty to seventy is the scale. So you know instead of zero to ten, it's sixty to seventy. These are mint state sixty one, so they come encapsulated in a see through case uh, with the grade of the coin on it. Uh, it's it's one of those things where normally this coin's twenty four hundred and twenty five dollars. You can buy them today for $2,365. That is a savings of $60 a coin and below uh, what our normal liberties run. So that's always a cool thing. Get a a coin that has, uh, you know, more prestige to it, a a little bit of collector value on top of it and not have to pay any collector premium. I've got 75 of those. And then on the silver side, yesterday we ran those half dollars, and it was a great deal. Silver is up another 53 cents, uh, $25.40 today. I'm going to hold the price on the half dollars. You can now buy rolls of half dollars. $215 $215 a roll. That's the same price as quarters. You buy 24 roll, 25 rolls or more. Yesterday, you could buy it for the same price. But now at 25 rolls or more, Jason, less than rolls of silver quarters and dimes at $210. So two great items to take advantage of today. 800 951 and copper and silver, Jason, seeming to be moving together as this shortage in both metals is starting to appear, you know, with all the electric vehicles, the solar, the wind, all this stuff really starting to have an effect on stockpiles. And we're now seeing uh, the, the paper markets reacting to the decrease in stockpiles of both of these metals. And I think, let's face it, silver can set up and go on a tear here. Since gold made its move, uh, you know, starting in, uh, Monday last week, uh, well, I think we had, me- I had mentioned that uh, a lot of times silver will 
when it does its catch up because it'll follow gold. But a lot of times when it does, if gold makes a good move, and gold made a good move, uh, silver sometimes will make a bigger move, and that's what it's looking like is happening. It looks like silver's making that bigger move up, and it's it's saying, okay, gold, I'll I'll go to twenty six, I'll go to twenty seven, or wherever it may uh, end up next week, right, Joe? Well, already when you look at the gold to silver ratio, this is a ratio where, especially lately, uh, it's been in the low 90s, like 91, 92 ounces of silver to an ounce of gold, 89 ounces of silver to an ounce of gold. Uh, Right now it's down to 85 ounces to an ounce of gold, and it's got a lot of room to run. I mean, you got to get to like 65 before you even start to feel like, uh, that the silver price is fairly valued, which would put silver at $33. I mean, silver's, you know, $25.40. Uh, that, 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 that's like silver could potentially run it, it easily $8 just to be back in what, what I would consider a normal price range for silver as when you talk about how many ounces of silver to an ounce of gold. Correct, and with the industrial demand to silver, it's really that's just still kind of a ridiculous number. <laughs> I think forty to one is probably better, Joe, because you know, not only is it the uh, the the solar panels and the electric cars, but we've been I've been playing things on the air and talking about the military. The military demand on silver is crazy, and uh, I started hearing facts that in nineteen ninety six, the military get, had to, uh, got to stop announcing how much silver they were using in their development and manufacturing of weapons uh, I played uh, man I can't remember the guy now that I uh, uh, it might have been Peter Schiff I can't remember who it was but the, basically he was saying look it, it, it takes 500 ounces of silver for one tomahawk warhead you know one missile monster box of silver right how many of these things are they blowing up currently uh, all over the world giving them to Ukraine going to Israel blowing up people uh, in the middle of a desert somewhere and, and that silver, I don't, I don't think any of that can be recovered. There's probably somebody out there trying to, but uh, that's that's a huge process, and that's that's takes that silver to gold ratio, Joe, and it shouldn't be even sixty-five to one. It really, really, when it's coming out of the ground, it's more like seven or twelve to one. So uh, forty to one, Joe, that's really where it should be. And so, at some point, when someone manufacturing things that seem very important to society just runs out and can't get it. Silver can be pushed to those ridiculous highs, like in 1980 when the Hunt brothers were buying it all. Well, now the market's buying it all. The manufacturing market's buying it all. Then the manufacturing market is now the Hunt brothers show. They're going to have a tremendous pressure on silver. And I know a lot of people are waiting for this big, huge silver rush. I don't know the timing of it, but when it goes, it's not going to be gentle and slow. It's not going to be like the soft landing the Fed's trying to get. It's going to be very, very rough road. It's going to be fast. It's going to move quick. Yeah, and, and and again, you know, think about how much war is going on right now, uh, military spending. Uh, once they finally get done with it, it's probably going to be a trillion dollars this year. And, I mean, silver's in everything. People don't realize it, right? Really? Oh, there's silver in bombs? Yeah, there's silver in, in ammunition? Yes, there's silver in, in this and that. Yep, yep, yep. You know, you, you, a satellite, right? A Starlink, right? There's silver in all of this, all of these things. And, and uh, it's really something where, and I've been saying this now, you know, we had big supply surpluses in silver for like 10 years. 2021, that kind of ended. 2022, they ran a really big deficit that took m- almost all of that 10 year supply and ate it up. 2023, all the remaining supply was eaten up as we ran a, a, another big silver deficit. And now in 2024, the deficit is getting even bigger. But the thing is, Jason, this time, there is no excess silver that was sitting around in storage or, or wherever it may have been to offset it. So that just tells you, like Jason said, with the physical markets, and the, when the paper markets realize there's no physical silver out there, we will probably see 
one of those dramatic rise in price seemingly overnight. Uh, I, I, I like silver right here, especially, you know, kind of breaking out to the upside. We'll be back after the break. 800 592 Joe and Jason wrapping up the week. Uh, Mint State 61 Twenty dollar liberties, two thousand three hundred sixty five dollars. That is less than a regular ungraded liberties by ten dollars. So you're not only are you getting a, a great price uh, on a mint state sixty one twenty dollar liberty, but that, now you're you're getting a little collector not a lot, but you're getting a little collector value. And actually paying ten dollars less for it. That's that that's what you want to do uh when you get into these graded coins. And then on the silver side, stock it up. Rolls of silver half dollars, two hundred and fifteen dollars by twenty-five rolls or more, two hundred and ten dollars. That would price it below uh silver dimes and silver quarters. You get twenty silver half dollars uh in every roll and of course we just talked about you know the the paper markets begrudgingly are starting to recognize uh uh-oh okay we're finally getting to that point now where uh we need more silver and it's not laying around in somebody's warehouse, and and the price is going to start moving. And like Jason said, uh, man, you can see a day where silver goes up two, three dollars in a single day. You know, think about like the crazy. Remember what happened? Was it nickel? That that one day where all of a yep. sudden pff, the price just like yep. tripled in a, in a single day. I mean, I I don't want that to happen. I hope it doesn't happen. But do I absolutely? Can I absolutely see silver run two, three, four, five dollars even in a day? I totally could see that because I'm sitting here watching the, the the silver inventories and it's just not there. Yeah, that nickel thing that happened. I think that was in China, wasn't it? It was in Asia, and it, it just it got price out of control, and someone was taking huge delivery, and it just, they just stopped the markets. And I think that went on for like a week, didn't it, Joe? They just shut it down for an entire week. Yeah, and uh, the uh, yeah. those those things are looked at very closely by the, by the, the market uh, managers. You know, the the, the guys, the, the big players, they see that stuff. They you know that, that they know what they're doing, Joe. They know what they're doing. So uh, if it happened to to, to nickel, they're going to try to prevent it or, or react well to it when it happens. But it seems to me that it, it's there's going to be a day where that's going to happen to a many of these commodity markets where they try to push past their paper control and. It's kind of a battle that I, I can't wait to see because I think you, you would, at some point the physical market will push past the paper, but the uh, the paper market sure has a firm grasp on a lot of people. It'll it'll take some time, but it's it's going to happen. That's that's when the re- the really ridiculous uh, what seems like really ridiculous calls on the price of gold and silver when someone says gold ten thousand or twelve thousand and silver at a thousand dollars an ounce. That's when that stuff can actually happen. And and uh, somebody will come out and say, you know what, we're no longer using the paper markets when it comes to physical price. We're going to have a new, you know, there'll be some new uh, you know, spot price to look at, Joe, that people will start to adopt. That's what we really need. We need someone with a fair look at these markets, pricing it uh, as, a, as a supply and demand goods instead of a supply of paper goods. Yeah, and, and again, like I said, you can cover it up for, for a while, uh, but... I think we're already seeing it. Really, when you think about uh, what what silver has been doing uh, the year over, you know, when we talk about the yearly averages, silver's been adding here uh, just like gold has. Uh, but now I think we, we may finally be setting up for, we'll watch that gold to silver ratio. I, I've got a feeling that this ratio is going to start coming in, start coming down. You know, we're at 85 today. Uh, you know, are we going to be at 80 in April? You know, is it going to be 75 in May, uh, 70 in June, something to that effect? I, I think that is likely simply because when you don't have enough silver out there and people need it, 
right? Tesla's going to need their silver, right? The, the automakers are going to need their silver. The defense, uh, the military, they're going to need their silver. All the satellites and all these, you know, missions to moon and all the, they're going to need their silver. Solar panels, wind, green energy, they're going to need their silver. And then what happened? Well, hey, I've got, you know, 100 metric tons of silver. How much are you willing to pay for it? Well, you know, the price is $25.40 an ounce. Yeah, I'm not selling it to you for that. How much do you want to pay? I'll pay $25.50. The next guy goes, hey, I'll pay $26. And then the next guy's like, I'll give you $27. I mean, Jason, that's what's going to happen. Yep, supply and demand. That's that's how markets are supposed to work, you know, and... and uh, we'll, we'll see. Like I said, we'll see how much how much longer paper control over some of these commodities will last before there will be a breakout. And that's why gold and silver keeps going up slowly over time, is because the paper market is too much pressure. Uh, as you were saying about the nickel, yep. that nickel explosion, that was too much pressure on the paper control over it. So it will happen, Joe. Let's just uh, let's just see what happens. I mean, that's that's kind of what the paper is doing right now. They're trying to get a hold of Bitcoin. Bitcoin's a uh, uh, getting a little out of control, and they, they have the, all of a sudden these ATFs. The ETFs are out there, and, and these Bitcoiners are so excited about uh, Bitcoin going to the moon. But I don't think they understand that the ETF is not a good sign for the, their price of Bitcoin. Bitcoin could go completely out of control price-wise, but these ETFs are going to sell more paper than the actual Bitcoin that's out there. And then uh, it's funny when I see the Bitcoiners uh, kind of shame the gold and silver guys. Look, our ETFs are worth more than silver. I just can't wait for Bitcoiners to figure out sometime in the future. They're, they're going to join the, the controlled paper markets of gold and silver. It's like, all right, Bitcoin, come on over. Join the club. Yep, they got paper controlling you now, too. You could have had this, you could have had this free asset that went out of control, but no. Nope. No, you let, the, you let the big financiers paper you over, dude. <laughs> so so uh, physical gold and silver is kind of an advantage over uh, something that's on the Internet, right, Joe? The ETFs like to sell, and when they sell, they seem to all sell at once, don't they? Pixel Radio News Hour, final segment of the week coming up. 800-951-0592, final segment of the week. And did you see uh, the Boeing whistleblower? Jason, did you see anything about him? So he, he, he was blowing the whistle on Boeing and, and doing... Uh, I guess a shoddy job at, at, at building uh, their airplanes. He, he allegedly committed suicide this week. A uh, story broke today that he had texted a friend, hey, by the way, uh, if I die, it's not suicide, right? That, that they're, they're trying to shut me up. I don't know, but... Uh, boy, would that be a bad look for Boeing if that ends up, you know, that it, that it wasn't suicide and and uh, somebody was trying to shut this guy up. Kind of, kind of interesting. I don't know, you know, I don't want to uh, say that it was or it wasn't. But John John Barnett, sixty two, uh, he was in the process of testifying against Boeing and its aircraft manufacturing process. Uh, he was found dead in South Carolina with what appeared to be a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. But now a family friend said that before he died, he warned her that if he were found dead, it would not be the results of a suicide. So, I, I don't know, uh, but, but it's I, one of those things where you're like, oh, gosh, I hope that's not true. They have a term for that, Joe. They call it being suicided. They call that, that's what they call it now. These guys, end up, they always send the message out. There's so many of these guys that send the message out. Yeah, if, I, if, 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 if something happens to me and I'm, and I'm, I'm disappear forever or I'm found dead, I did not kill myself. There's so many guys that have done this. You know, uh, John McAfee did the same thing when they were pushing, they were pushing on him and, and, and worried about what he was doing. He actually was going to run for, I think he was running for president in 2016, of all things, before he was suicided. And so uh, I, I highly doubt he's killed himself. I mean, a, a guy working for Boeing, you know, wh what reason does he have to kill himself? I'm sure he did really well. You know, I'm, he's, uh, he's putting out that warning to his family member because he knows that he's stepping on some really big toes, Joe. 
Well, it, it's it's interesting uh, that is making the rounds here. But as we close out uh, for the week, uh, the Dow's down uh, 150 points now. The S and P's down 32. The Nasdaq's down 150 as that 10-year note has crested above the 430 range. Uh, gold's down a couple of bucks here now, 2165, pretty flat. Silver having uh, another strong day here. Squarely above that $25 an ounce range, uh, going to be uh, as long as it stays here, a close above 25. Another bullish sign for silver up 50 cents right now. Uh, the specials for today: the Mint State 61. $20 liberties at $2,365. Those are going to be PCGS and NGC grades. And then the silver half dollar rolls, 1 through 24, $215. You buy 25 rolls or more, $210 at 800 951 0592. And Jason, you know, kind of like every week, if you like, just yeah, we just don't know what, what we're going to get next week, right? The year of chaos. It seems like something always happens uh, every week to get the chaos going. But we'll be here to report it all. But Jason and I, we're going to come right back with the half-empty cup to wrap up the week. God bless everybody.